It is 1130 and welcome again back to GERCON 2019. Those of you that are here for only one day or if you're on the second day, welcome back. Glad to see you. I haven't seen anybody carrying around beer yet. Did we run out? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. But what? That's like river like water. <laughs> Sorry. Ugh. I live in Grand Rapids. This is beer city. Except for founders, we don't talk about them anymore because they're kind of racist, I think. I don't know what they're doing. But I don't know, just read the news lately. Something's going on with them. So I'm here to present Dave Rose. He's from HP. He's going to talk about some printer security and probably other things that have more acronyms like IoT. Is that a thing? <laughs> All right. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Rose. I'm part of our worldwide security practice at HP. And Lasers Resource asked me to come up and uh, talk at this event. And we've been sitting at their booth kind of going over a few things. But I really want to open up print today and to talk about some, as we're risk assessors, and on the global team, we actually do assessments in the fortune space and even down into the SMB space. So we want to share some of those details to start off with, get some of that business talk out of the way, and then I actually want to show you some of the threats and vulnerabilities and tools that are out there and how people are using uh, devices and exporting printers to exfiltrate data. So first off, quick disclaimer, please don't forget as you're buying things on our networks, printers are still endpoints, so they are a security decision. We have to look at those pieces. In some of those talks, we're actually looking at, you know, why are we just buying to a price on printers? Because that's always been where it is. We're not actually looking at the data that's moving across to them. And what we're typically finding is people are buying printers to a spec and they're looking at price and speed. And hopefully today we're helping to change that thought to say, look, they're actual dangerous devices on our network. They're processing the same data that we're worried about protecting in our cloud, our servers, and other endpoints. And so we'll show you how easy it is to capture some of that and leverage it as well. All right, just quickly, i throw a couple stats out there um, just to get it out of the way. We know that good cyber hygiene can prevent a lot of data breaches out there. And so making sure that we have equal citizenship of the endpoints, including printers, is equally important on our networks. And so a good proof point of that was when Microsoft came out with their blog, did the reporting over Fancy Bear, um, and what they were using endpoints to uh, get lateral on the network. And a part of that was talking about their IoT devices, including printers. We have been evangelizing printers for years. Not everyone's wanted to listen to what we've had to say. I've been able to hear some stories from several of you out there, actually, who have gone out and banged on some printers and picked on them, and I think that's great. Uh, and it's more now just coming to light as more parties outside of HP are realizing that printers can be hacked. Imagine that. They're computers. Hmm? <laughs> so one of the talks that we focus on is one we have to understand the technology. I think everyone here has that love for understanding technology and playing on it. And so we're working through our partners and working directly with clients to re-educate on that and doing workshops. But then also we have to understand our biggest problem of malware people, right? We have to look at how we're coaching and how we're using that equipment and where those gaps may lie. And here we're talking more of the technical piece, but in general, when we're focusing on data breaches, we know that around physical media, a lot of it's including paper, is produced from that printer. And what are our people doing with that information? For example, I was just reading a study in the EU to where they found, uh, it was just a blind survey that went out and the respondents came back with 11% saying that they had sold off uh, client or company information for about three to 800 euros per document. They were printing off company information and selling it. And it was just, uh, hey, can you fill this out for data breaches? What have you done? Have we used USB sticks? Have we used email, Dropbox, FTPs, different, me uh, different methods? And we just thought it was really interesting that, hey, I know this was volunteer, but 11% said, yeah, it's just as simple as printing off the information, walking out the door with it. And so we look for those things and we find them, but it was nice to see a third party looking into it from a data breach perspective. And lastly, we got to look at processes. Let's face it. As we're going through and doing risk assessments, looking for gaps and doing walkthroughs in our environments, uh, we talk to a lot of pen testers out there and even working with lasers, uh, developing programs to analyze the process of how we're looking at document lifecycle and where we can find gaps to improve. 
For examples, I was just doing a walkthrough for a bank, and we found that uh, we look at the hardware. You know, we look at, okay, can we use USB, yada, yada. But right next, think about your offices. Think about where we work. Right next to every single copier and printer, what do you have? you got a recycle bin, and you've got a trash can. And then where's that secure shred box? Is it as close as that trash can and recycle bin? No. Is it always in the same room? Well, think about retail banking. It's in the back, right? Because we don't want it to be out front. And so we found boxes sitting on desks where people were taking that info and putting it in the box and letting it sit all day. And at the end of the day, they'd walk it to the back and put it in the bin. Well, then we found out the employees didn't even know what to do when the bin was full. We had paper. I have pictures on my phone where paper was just falling out of it because they didn't know to call the phone number on the front to get it emptied. Right? So these simple processes can lead to, lead to huge data breaches. Or even at a hospital system, we found out that they fired their shred company and they were taking the boxes and dumping them in the trash can. And that's a huge no-no, right? So those small things that we have to analyze and look at those processes to find gaps to avoid huge problems. All right, enough of that side. I'll tell you kind of what we're finding today globally as we're doing assessments. This will be looking at just the framework. Um, if we have anywhere between 60 to about 140 controls that we're looking at as we do assessments. And so some of that framework is up here. So if you look at the percentages, though, the biggest problems is configuration. And I want you to think about your environments today. When you deploy printers, do you have a secure baseline? You know, what does it look like? Do we have a golden image that we're actually putting on these devices and putting them out there and shutting off protocols and locking down ports and making sure that they're hardened to the rest of the liking of the network? Do we have segmentation? Are we actually doing audit trails? Are we authenticating to know who's using these devices? Right, so we're finding that these things aren't being done. Log management is a big problem. We're not monitoring what these devices are doing. As, as we go through, and I'll show you some things, remember, we create syslog data on printers today. Right, so if we're actually having attempts of attack or breaches or brute forces trying to log in, we're creating that data. Let's connect it to the server so we have high visibility. All right, so we are finding that one globally and in the Americas, let's face it, we're not giving printers respect. So from a good perspective, we have a lot to work on and grow. From a bad perspective, everybody knows printers are a weak link. And it's been like that for years. The next piece is we look at verticals. So our two biggest verticals that make up over half of our assessments are finance and healthcare both US and globally. We've touched over, I think today, about six and a half million machines as part of our assessments. And so we have some pretty good sampling pools. The reality that we know is that no single vertical or area is strong in print security and in document security, right? And so going through, we get a lot of people that stand up and say, you know, we're super secure. This is how are we looking at, we have, all these settings, our printers are on their own separate VLAN. We go through, we do vulnerability scans, and then I ask about patching. Are you, are you, are you updating your firmware? Are you doing security bulletins? And like 90% say no. But most lean back to their vendors and say, they're doing it. And I go, really? Did you look at your service level agreements? It's not in there. It's break fix. They're not doing bulletins for you. And whose responsibility is that? All right. So where does this lead us to, right? Couple, one more slide on just some of the points and then we'll get into the fun stuff. So what we're seeing up here is we look at patching. We know it's not being done. From a big perspective, we are finding some patching being done mixed in environments, but almost half zero patching. Then we're looking at policies. No one actually creates a formal policy out there. It's about a 50% you know, hit or miss is if we're going to actually document formal policies. Um, the other piece I want to share is actually generic accounts. Think about logical access. How, how are we sharing one password to print servers to pull, we go and put pull print software out there. Some organizations can spend millions, some can spend tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands on this software. And we're creating one username, one password. It's generic. Everyone uses it. And half the time, it's the default that was created. And on most of those softwares, there's a backdoor uh, template file that you can open up and look at clear text what those passwords are. 
right? So it's really scary. It's really easy to get into, but what's in those softwares? Some are attached to credit card accounts at universities. Some are attached to billing systems for law firms. Some are attached to Active Directory, right? Are we going to healthcare? Now we're integrating to Epic and Cerner, and we're putting all these credentials out there, and we're using generic passwords. Why do we have to breach other systems when I got printers just laying out there, right? Okay, so we don't, <laughs> disclaimer, up top, it's not a lesson. You know, I'm just here to show uh, things that we look at. All right, so this I did a couple of years just at home. It's Wireshark. I know it's just everyone kind of understands Wireshark, so I was using it here. If you actually go to Laser's resource booth, they've also got the uh, packet squirrel as another example, how to, how to snag packets. Um, but this was just filtering port 9100. And so if you were looking up here, um, we can simply just, this is how we print standard today. So if we grab print packets off the network using Wireshark, we can open it up. If we open it as raw data and actually convert it into a PRN, we can start using it. And so we take that data and open it up in a text editor. We get some decent information. So what you'll see at the top here is print job language. And so I want to talk about that for a second. These are allowed commands on printers. This is, who am I? Am I making two copies, one copy? Is it monochrome? Is it color? Stapled? All that stuff. Well, then we started looking at, okay, where are the vulnerabilities in that? Well, do you know how we used to do remote firmware upgrades? Through a print job. You add the firmware into the print job language, send the print job over, and it executes and updates firmware. Well, you guys ever heard of Red Balloon? So Ung at Red Balloon years ago created Fontana. Fontana is where he used print jobs to create malicious attack or actually just rogue firmware. He was pushing out and he took over printers. He used this to embed into a print job to get you to upgrade the firmware. His firmware was written to do multiple things. Two things. One, to steal print jobs. And two, to get lateral on the network. One thing that he did was he got lateral and actually reached out to the VoIP phones. And on the phones, he was able to exploit those and turn on the uh, microphone. So it was on if I'm in the room or if I'm on the phone. And what he was able to do was to get off the network. He actually used electricity to vibrate boards and to create frequency over AM radio. He took that, he converted it back to binary, and he had his little AM radio he called Tom Cruise that was sitting there grabbing everything you were saying in the room. And then he connected it to Twitter at one point and just had it texting him everything you were saying. And it's really interesting because everyone feels that my printers are dumb, they're behind the firewall, and they're safe. Well, I don't care what firewall, what intrusion detection and prevention system we have, they don't open and inspect print packets. The print packet doesn't execute till it hits the printer, and this wasn't malicious because it was an allowed protocol. It was a remote firmware upgrade, and he found a way to hide it in there. So that was one attack that's there. And just YouTube Fontana, he did some great talks at Black Hat and things. Question? Uh, and I'm assuming this only applies to enterprise network printers, not uh, something like that. It was an agnostic attack. It, it wasn't an HP or any branded. He was able to use it because we use some of the same protocols. Uh, so the enterprise then is just the standards, just the printing methods, and it's not just an HP piece as well. So, but there, I will talk about some differences in a minute here about Enterprise and Pro on how we're protecting on that. Yeah, it's just that you know, old consumer level printer at the moment because it still works. Yes, printers will work for a long time, and we can. I def I, just because time is a little short today. I def I want to talk to you. And so if you don't mind afterwards, we'll, we'll have a talk on it. So, cause I only got about 10 more minutes. So sorry. Um, no, no worries. And so there's, there's questions about that, right? But let's look through what else we can do here. One, let's talk about reconnaissance. If we look through here, we can actually look at who my username is, what my computer name is, the operating system and the version that I was using. So now I can say, okay, what version of windows do you have? What is your username? Who are you? I can look at the packet that you're printing, where you're printing, so I can find executives, I can find HR, I can find check printers, all through this data, and no one's printing encrypted, by the way, so what can we do past this? Well, if we go past the print job language, right at the bottom, it tells us what language we're going to use to produce the image. Here it's PCL. 
But we can change that to PostScript by simply typing that in. And then this would be PostScript language at the bottom, which would be our image. So where our vulnerability lies in there as well is hiding malware in PostScript. So now your image would pass through the entire network. So that's why we created the Wolf series. And if you've seen the Christian Slater videos we created, it was, hey, you've got your, uh, everybody loves a foot rub, print off your coupon, right? And that's how they were able to dump malware into the printers. And if the printers are in a trust environment because we want everyone to print to them, now they're talking to servers and they're talking direct IP to PCs, right? So we have the ability to go lateral because we realize not everyone is segmenting printers on their own VLANs. So inside there, we can change the language and hide and bypass all of the protections that we have on the network level. Lastly, we can take a simple command file with this PR end and reproduce the image. We can turn it into PDF. So it's just a PDF printer at that point. And so here we're saying, look, we can use Wireshark as one method. We can use uh, packet squirrels as another method, something just to plug in through the network cable and grab packets all day long because print scan is unencrypted. Or we can use things like PRET. So PRET was created by Jens Mueller. It's the Printer Exploitation Toolkit. It's Kali Linux for printers. Right? It's script kitty, copy and paste, everything you want to do to a printer. He has a guaranteed list within there that what will work. And on the newest iterations of new devices, hey, it's try it. Let's see what we can do. Because most of it's not actually using uh, like malware or different firmwares. We're just using allowed commands to exploit, uh, you know, just to exploit or take whatever we want out of them. And so, as you can see here, he's using uh, PJL and PostScript as well through the translators to exploit the devices. Uh, just a quick example of what you can do is here's a copy of most everything that's out here. Uh, you can, his commands. The one I like most is mirror, which is essentially trying to take all the print jobs, store them into the FTP or the hard drive of the device and create yourself a link to retrieve them later. So now you have your own packet sniffer. And why not hide inside of a copier or a printer's hard drive? Is anyone monitoring those at their offices or home today? You checking to see what's on them? I know we had a conversation earlier with me and a fellow of, of using the hard drives to store data. I've tried to get HP to allow me to store my presentations on a printer, bring it in just to show you how easy it is, but legal doesn't allow it. So <laughs> we're a little conservative at HP. <laughs> so on the other pieces, you know, we've got things like Shodan out there that I think all of us would know about. Um, it's a great fun toy to go out there and just find Internet of Things. Uh, there's also like MassScan. It's like what we've used when he was hitting all the colleges a few years ago, printing off all the anti-Semitic flyers and then what we saw with the PewDiePie. And now it's a great business model. It's uh, spam as a service. So basically, you go out there and find all the port 9100s that are open, you charge about $2,500, and you do a weekly spam, just like people used to do on fax machines. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll print off your ads on every single printer out there. We found 60,000 printers in one hour just in Ireland, just sitting out there. There's a ton, because people aren't thinking about it. Okay, so, and then also when we connect, this is what we're talking about, is we're finding FTPs wide open. And this is where it gets really scary because of the put commands, right? What can we hide in people's copiers? We actually saw at a university, remember Napster? They were using the hard drives, the FTP, to do a music file shares. It was really interesting. Or we all had to pay for prints in college, right? Well, what if you just used the PJL commands and did a cold reset and turned that software off? That's what kids were doing as well. <laughs> they sent a print job to the machine turned off all the software, got all their free prints, and walked on. And we got the calls, hey, man, this software keeps turning off. We can't, what is going on? And we found out through forensics, your kids were smarter than you. <laughs> so, all right, in all fairness, we've had to do some things at HP. We've had to change the way that we embed protections. Um, so I'll go very quickly through this um, because we're not here to kind of pitch our stuff. But one, we've got to protect the BIOS. So we took our sure start technology. We keep a golden copy stored, embedded in the device. So every time we boot, we do that integrity check to make sure that our BIOS is clean, uncorrupted. If it is, we actually just kill that and pull back in the golden copy and restart the machine. Uh, the next piece is whitelisting. This made the most sense out of everything. Stop letting rogue firmware get on our printers, right? On our PCs, on everything. So we whitelist now. 
and we make sure that all third-party and HP firmware is whitelisted and has all of our code signatures. The next piece is runtime intrusion. So we can't put anti-malware. We're not doing code signatures, no AI. You're not going to pay for it to be on a printer. Uh, so what we do is we actually monitor the memory. We're looking for anomalies. We're looking for executables and things that step outside the normal operations. If it does, we just power cycle the machine to clear the memory, and then we start back up checking the BIOS and checking the firmware. If there is anything above that machine gets owned, we have Connection Inspector. So what this does, this actually monitors all the outbound network traffic. So if we get hit and we're going out to a CNC or going into C2s, we're saying, look, if we get owned, we know we're going to reach out for commands. So let's go ahead and just quarantine these machines. What happens is out of the box, it's anomaly based. So if I get 30, 40 attempts to go after, uh, you know, these DNS queries, we'll shut it down. Or we can simply whitelist. So we can say one attempt outside the normal. We want to kill the machine and pull it off the network. And so that's where we've redeveloped what goes in the machines. Lastly, we wanted to give printers the same respect as PCs and the ability to manage and deploy and to have enforced compliance. So we created Security Manager. This is the same concept. Add all your endpoints, create your security policies, deploy them, do your assessments, do your remediations. We have the instant on piece, which is using the network card. Every time it powers up, it reaches out and says, give me the baseline. So think about an employee goes to uh, make a network change. It'll actually have to recycle the network card or, or reinitialize, and it'll check it against it. So this way we have 24 seven uh, enforced compliance of it. And the last piece, I showed you how it's easy to grab packets on printers because they're unencrypted. Well, we've got to do certificate management. No one encrypts printers because it takes about 20 minutes a machine. And think about how big fleets can get. So here, what we do is we actually configure it once in the software. It takes about three or four minutes across the network to do about four at a time. Um, but we just schedule it and set up the renewals for certificates. And we get the compliance reporting completed. So this is security manager. It's a very high level. But it's just trying to bring the same concept that we've put into managing our PCs into our printers. And then... Quick on Lasers Resource, what we've done, teaming up with them and other partners, but primarily in this region, they're our leader, is we've actually built tools and assessment pieces that they can go out and help you understand your risk. And so one is we took the NIST framework. Uh, we took their uh, 4023 framework around replication devices. Uh, we digitized it. So then they actually have added on to it, but it was the starting piece. So then they have the questionnaires, right? What to go through, what to dig on how to document those findings. The next piece is actually a firmware assessment. Because we know people aren't patching, and it's super simple for us to know the databases, so we actually do quick assessments and looking at the firmware levels to let you know bulletins. So it takes them just a few minutes, and they'll tell you all bulletins that you would have in your firmware, if it's old, if it's new, and what needs to be done. And then lastly, oh, I didn't put a piece on there. Uh, they actually take the configuration scans. They do walkthroughs, they do a whole lot more, but then they say, hey, let's go out and check basic settings. Let's just make sure these things are hardened and we'll go out and scan them for you. So that was my time today. I appreciate you coming out. I know printers aren't always the funnest thing, but I will say they are left unguarded. There's a lot of important data touching them. So either protect them or go break them. <laughs> Thank you.